Hi, good morning and welcome to St. Brendan's. I'm Joe Sheppey and this is Morning Prayer Rite 2, the seventh Sunday of Easter. We will begin with the opening hymn, Christ is Alive, the first two verses. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our master, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Also Psalm 68, one through 10, let's read it responsibly by whole verse. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides above the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, his majesty is over Israel. 
His strength is in the skies. How wonderful, wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The first reading this morning is from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading today is a reading from John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Butler and I have the homily today and I miss you. I really miss seeing all of you and having coffee and dessert and talking after church with you and I'll be so glad when we can do that again. But right now I'm really grateful that we have the opportunity to uh, gather together virtually in worship and in fellowship. So turning to today, the present moment, today's a big day. Uh, we're celebrating the Feast of the Ascension when Christ was taken up to heaven after staying with his disciples for 40 days after his death. It's a core part of Christian theology and faith, and we profess it every time we say the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. In the Gospel reading today, we hear about Jesus' prayer when the day of his crucifixion draws closer, and he prepares to depart this world praying for his disciples and all who follow him and asking that they, or today we as contemporary disciples, share in Jesus's ascension, which is God's eternal life. 
And yikes, do I ever struggle with understanding this, with the whole Gospel of John, and especially with that eternal life stuff. The uh, Synoptic Gospels tell us the story of Jesus's life, but John is so different, focusing instead on the meaning of his life which is of course theologically so very tied up with his death, which we all know is the transformation to eternal life. The synoptic gospels tell us all about Jesus, the man, but God is where Jesus is revealed as the Christ, or put another way, where God is revealed in Jesus. And I get myself all tied up in knots when I read John. I can't imagine eternal life. What does that look like? And I definitely can't imagine bodily ascension. What on earth would that feel like? And how would it happen? And what's being one with God? And why do we still, in this day and age, use male pronouns for God? And why does the Gospel of John describe Jesus' preparation for the end so differently from all the other Gospels? How can this Gospel be so different and still be true? And what's the meaning of the glorification petition we heard just now in the Gospel reading? And then I'm stuck again on eternal life. And then, finally, I start to unwind, and I remember that my job is not to have answers or proofs, but to have faith. That message of all the Gospels, all of them, is not a call to understand the divine intellectually or experience it physically. Rather, it's a call to be open to the existence of the divine in the world, the divine in our world today and a willingness to experience the divine. The Gospels, all of them, show us a way of life, give us a model, Jesus, for how to experience the divine. In the passage from John that Joe read just now, Jesus is shortly to die, to be crucified, and he knows it, but his concern is for others. He has faith that ultimately all will be well. In the meantime, however, in the finite world of this moment in time, rather than the ultimate world of the divine, when time no longer binds us, he asks that others all have the opportunity to experience the benefits of having faith so that they can experience the divine in themselves. The more I think about my questions and my fears and my longings for communion with God, the more questions I have and the less I understand. But when I slow down and pray about those questions and fears and longings, the more I feel communion with the divine. In my humanness, I'm bound by time, by physical space, by being female, by being short. I will never ever know what it would be like to reach up at Fred Meyers and actually get a two liter bottle from the top shelf all by myself. (laughs) I'm bound by not knowing what it's like to be anything other than who I am right now. I'm bound by knowing only what I've experienced. So how can I possibly know God? But when I pray and have faith, I become somehow more open I'm not sure how, but those existential barriers, those limits to my humanness become less in the way of experiencing the divine. I can't know God intellectually, but I can know God by having faith and following the model of Jesus in the Gospels. In prayer, we can all become quiet. And with faith, we can stop worrying about tomorrow or getting caught up in the past because we can experience communion with God God's love, and become completely present to each moment in our human lives, which is in itself a form of eternal life, being truly, deeply, and immediately present to the divine in each and every moment of being with God. I subscribe to the daily message from Frederick Beekner, the theologian and minister, and in a, a recent blog post, um, Beekner discusses how Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, tells them how to be a Christian community, which he says is following the example of Jesus and having faith. When they do so, when they do those two things, Jesus is the Christ, and they become one with him and share in his glory and eternal life. I love what Beekner says about Paul's message. 
And we also have an invitation in that message, which I'd like to read to you. So this is Beekner discussing Paul's message to the Philippians. In everything, Paul says, the Philippians are to keep on praying. Come hell or high water, they're to keep on asking, keep on thanking, and above all, keep on making themselves known. He doesn't promise them that as a result, they'll be delivered from the worst things any more than Jesus himself was delivered from them. What he promised them instead is that, and here he quotes Paul, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Buechner continues, the worst things will surely happen no matter what. That is to be understood. But beyond all our power to understand, he writes, we will have peace both in heart and in mind. We are as sure to be in trouble as sparks fly upward, but we will also be in Christ, as Paul puts it. Ultimately, not even sorrow, loss, or death can get at us there. So I think that's the message from our gospel reading today in terms of what Jesus was asking in his prayer and giving in the sacrifice of his life. Of his life. The prayer we read is sometimes called the farewell prayer since it's Jesus's final intercession and instructions to his disciples. It asks on behalf of the disciples in verse 17, which is a little bit further than what was read today, that they all may be one which we echo each week in our liturgy. It's thus asking for the gift of unity with God, which is the gift of eternal life through faith. I'm gonna close by jumping back to Beekner's discussion of Paul's message to the Philippians on how to be Christians. Paul's message is the map to the treasure trove, the key, the secret to eternal life, the answer to the question of how Christians receive the gifts that Jesus asks for in John's recounting of the farewell prayer. Paul's faith showed him that the secret to sharing in God's eternal life, that uh, he wanted his beloved church at Philippi to also share in, that communion, and to proclaim the gospel of eternal life with God through Christ, and here it is, the secret of having faith, the message we celebrate when we celebrate the ascension. It's in Philippians 4, and it says, very simply, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. Thank you, Stephanie. You always make me think. <laughs> Today's gospel reading is a reading from John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over, I'm sorry, I am very sorry. I want Apostles' Creed. Apostles Creed. See, I was going to do the gospel again. <laughs> Forgive me. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Following is a prayer in time of the pandemic. Lord Jesus Christ, in your time on earth, you healed the sick and taught your disciples to do so also. We ask that you bless those who are sick among us and enable us to find ways to heal them. Protect those who care for the sick without concern for their own well-being. Bring those who have died into your heavenly mansions. Comfort the loved ones of those who have died and give them strength to move on in the hard days ahead. In your ministry, you taught us to reach out to those who are poor, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. Guide us to help those who have lost their incomes, those who struggle to support their families, and those whose losses bring them emotional, physical, and spiritual distress. Help us to offer hope and assistance to all who suffer in this difficult time. Lord Jesus, help us to respond to one another in love, without blame or judgment. Replace our fear with courage and strength. Be present with those who are isolated and give them faith. Help us to remember that our only true health and well-being is in you, our Savior and our eternal friend. Amen. A prayer for the gifts of Holy Communion when the sacrament cannot be received. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Today's loose offering will go to the Vestry Discretionary Fund.
Prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Carolyn, our priest in charge, Michael, our deacon, and Mark, our archdeacon. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for President Trump, Governor Dunleavy, the Congress, the state legislature, and the Supreme Court. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Dan and Julie, Rod, Barbara, Ashu, Erus, Debbie, Aaron and Devon, Dwayne, Constance, Dave, Nicole, Marsha, Colleen, Pat, Vanda, Faith, Holly, Troy, Debbie, Cheryl, David, John, Lori, Mariah, Paul, Carl, Sherry A, Jane, Jerry, Mary Rose, Don A, Trisha, Jackie, Jordan, Jeremy, Scott, Rebecca, Olivia, Anne, Julie, Jeannie, Jonathan. For all those on the front lines dealing with the coronavirus and those suffering from it, the victims of domestic violence, all who live and work at the Johnson Youth Center and Juno Youth Services Homes, all who live with addictions and those who love and care for them, all around the world who suffer from AIDS or Alzheimer's and for those who look for a cure. Give to the departed, especially Felicia, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In Thanksgiving, we pray for our church family, especially Dee Smith and family, and for Provincia in India. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A prayer of Christendom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in age to come everlasting. Amen. The closing hymn is If Thou But Trust in God. Bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
May the God of hope fill us with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hopefully, everyone, um, we will see each other soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and please stay safe and stay healthy. And love to all of you.